All right, so today I want to show you the potential of the lesser ball python. The lesser is one of the base morphs in the ball python industry. It's been around for quite a long time. And today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to start out with some of the basic combos, mixing lesser with some of the more common genes in ball pythons. And then I want to show you some more advanced strategies for getting some amazing snakes. You know, a lot of people say that it's not really the number of genes that are in a ball python that makes it look really impressive. It is combining the right genes to make really impressive combos. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to jump over to Morph Market and I want to show you the awesome potential of the lesser ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here at MorphMarket.com and I want to start with just the single gene lesser. It's actually a co-dominant. You can actually have two copies of the gene, but this is just one single gene of the lesser. And at first glance, you can definitely tell it's a lot different than a normal ball python. Essentially what it does is it wipes out all the Roswell gray alien heads on the sides of the snake, brings a lot of yellow color into the snake, and a lot of times I've seen lessers that are a lot more intense than this, and really there's a lot of contrast, usually right along the back between the yellow on the back and the black background. And when I think of lesser, probably the first thing that comes to mind is a super lesser. And this is what a super lesser looks like. It is a really beautiful all white snake with blue eyes. This is in the blue eyed leucistic complex. And I'd say the BEL complex is kind of a double edged sword in some cases. So for example, if you actually had two copies of the lesser, or if you had a lesser bamboo or a lesser Mojave or a lesser Russo, anything in the blue eyed leucistic, you end up with with a white snake and some people say it's it's really good because a lot of people like the white snakes it's a really top seller and you know when people come up to my table at the reptile show and I have a blue-eyed leucistic in my case everybody comes up and says hey can I hold the white snake it's always the most popular but as a breeder you know from a breeder standpoint I would say it's a little bit difficult because you know you, you have a white snake and then you have this whole palette of all these other genes that you want to use to mix in to see if you can actually improve it and in the blue eyed leucistic you can't add anything that really changes the white snake so for example if you put pinstripe in this snake and pinstripe is visually dominant and even the pinstripe would be completely invisible you'd end up with just a white snake but on the flip side it's it's actually really good because because this is actually an allelic combination. So for example, I produced a blue-eyed leucistic that was a lesser bamboo, and if I breed that lesser bamboo to anything else, half of the offspring come out lesser, half of the offspring come out bamboo, and I don't get any normals at all. Really powerful breeder. And if I have additional genes in the mix, I can get a whole bunch of stuff without getting any normals. So it's a, it's a really powerful breeder, but as far as adding to the color potential of the white snake, you really can't can't do it. So what I'm going to do is I want to start with just a few base genes and kind of show you the combination between some of these base genes with the lesser added on top of it. This is a pinstripe, one of my favorite combos, a really gold snake, probably the goldest snake that you can get in any ball python. Looks really awesome. I produced quite a few pinstripes. This is what happens when you layer on the lesser on top of the pinstripe. You get what is known as a kingpin, which is a pretty impressive snake. I've actually seen some of these. I've never produced one and it's mainly because uh, I've never really had a lesser male up until this year. I actually have a lesser scaleless head male that I produced this year. I could actually breed it to my pinstripe. and I have a pinstripe female. I can actually produce some of these really impressive combo. Here's the albino. I've produced quite a few albinos too, and I'd say the albino is probably one of my top sellers when I can actually produce them. They, they bring in a, quite a bit of money too. They, they've been holding their price pretty much for the last five years since I've been in ball pythons. Albinos today are selling for pretty much what they were selling, you know, five years ago, which is really good. It's kind of the same with the clowns and the pides, some of the stuff that really holds its value. And it's a really visually stunning snake with the bright red eyes. This is what happens when you mix lesser on top of albino. Essentially what you get is you get an albino that has a little bit of a jumbled up pattern and in a lot of cases you can actually see some of the orange coming into the snake that kind of breaks up the yellow which is pretty awesome. 
Here's another one if you're into dark morphs. This is actually the cinnamon. The, the super cinnamon is almost an all black snake. Pretty awesome. And when you mix cinnamon with a lot of combos, a lot of times you'll see some streaking along the sides. It's a dark morph, so if you layer anything on top of the cinnamon, a lot of times you'll end up with some hatchlings that have a really dark background from the cinnamon. Here's what happens when you mix the lesser with the cinnamon. Makes for a really impressive snake. You know, I haven't really been into the dark morphs, but if I was into the dark morphs I would consider cinnamon and there's one actually that I like even better than cinnamon that is the mahogany I actually pulled up the mahogany I actually did a uh, like a morph special video on the mahogany makes some really impressive combos with almost anything you mix with mahogany this is what happens when you mix mahogany with lesser take a look at this crazy snake that is one of the most amazing combos that I've seen with just two genes with the lesser and the mahogany agony. Here's the clown. So the clown's a little bit tricky because this is actually a recessive mutation. You need two copies of the clown gene to actually see a visual. This is what happens when you mix the clown and the lesser. And I actually have a clown lesser female and they start out really bright like this and kind of fade a little bit as they mature. And some of them I found this kind of polymorphic where a lot of them will have a lot of white coming up the sides. And in my particular lesser clown, I actually don't have any white coming up the sides. I think I like the white a little bit better and I don't really know if it's line dependent or if the white is you know if you produce a whole clutch of them if some just have more or less white Here's the banana. Banana is another visually dominant morph. The banana is co-dominant. You can actually have a super banana, which looks almost like the banana, which is kind of interesting. Here's what happens when you mix the lesser with the banana. You get a really impressive snake. I've actually seen some different combos that look really close to this with, without the banana or the lesser. I'd say this is probably one of my favorite banana combos. You bring in the lesser and it really, it really brings in the contrast. You can tell this is a pretty big snake. It looks like it's uh, uh, probably a yearling or maybe an adult. Looks really impressive. Has a lot of contrast in the pattern. So this is kind of where I wanted to change things up. So pretty much up until this point, we've looked at some of the base genes just mixed with the lesser. And what I want to do is I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and I want to show you the potential mixing the lesser with the leopard. So this is the leopard ball python. I'd say the leopard is probably the king of combos when it comes to mixing up the patterns on a lot of snakes. It mixes really well with a lot of different morphs. This is what happens when you mix the lesser with the leopard you get a really impressive snake and kind of my thinking is instead of showing you additional morphs with the lesser what I'm actually going to show you is I want to show you how to make some even more insanely impressive snakes working with the lesser leopard genes those two genes as a starting point and then layering other things on top of the lesser leopard that's kind of the secret of breeding ball pythons it's knowing what works together and then what you can put on top of those genes to make some visually stunning combinations. So take a look at this. So this is just the base lesser leopard. This is what happens when you put pastel on top of lesser leopard. It makes a really crazy looking snake. That thing is really awesome. As a matter of fact, I don't have leopard in my collection. And I'm thinking, you know, you kind of start looking at this and you're, you know, kind of as a breeder, you're always thinking, what can I breed with my lesser females to make some impressive combinations? So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I want a male that has pastel and leopard in it and then I'll actually produce some pastel lesser leopards. Here's another one. This is the banana lesser leopard. So I actually, you know, got multiple gene males and then, you know, planned on breeding those with my females. You get some really crazy, I've never seen a snake that looks anything like this. Look at the striping on this snake. That looks really crazy. Just probably one of the craziest combos I've ever seen with these stripes on the back. It's almost like a peach color. Really pretty. <laughs> That's probably, oh, this one also says it it is possible fire so the fire could be in there making an effect I actually didn't catch the fire but that is one of the craziest snakes I've ever seen <laughs> I can't even believe that one so here's another one this is actually called the ocelot which is the lesser leopard pinstripe you actually can't see it up here but if you actually come down here and you can actually see this is 
the pinstripe lesser leopard this is also a scaleless head and the scaleless head essentially what it does is it removes a few scales from the top of the head you breed two scaleless heads together and you get a completely scaleless ball python so i'd say the the scaleless head is probably not influencing this much at all it's a really awesome looking snake really jumbles up the pinstripe i really like that it keeps a lot of the gold of the pinstripe but really jumbles up the pattern and makes it look really crazy Here's another really impressive combo. This is actually the Lesser Leopard with the Orange Dream on top of it. So you see where I'm going? You take the Lesser Leopard combination, you start adding the Pinstripe and the Orange Dream and all this other stuff on top, and you make some really crazy combos. And that one, actually, I can do one better. I, this one I actually layered on Yellow Belly. So this is the Lesser Leopard with the Orange Dream and the Yellow Belly on top of it. And you can see the Lesser Leopard base really makes for a really impressive base for a lot of these different combos. You can definitely see the yellow bellies and they're breaking up a lot of the pattern. Here's another crazy combo that I pulled up. This is actually the Lesser Leopard GHI. So the GHI is another dark morph. And this is the first time I've really seen the GHI act so impressive with another morph. You know, a lot of times with the dark morphs, you're always going for the really dark base morphs, trying to layer on something that is really bright and intense with that high contrast to stand out. And you can definitely tell there's some age on the snake, still keeping a really bright, high contrast, contrast between the yellow and the dark background. Really awesome combo. Here's another one. This is actually the Leopard Lesser Fire. It's a pretty simple combo between the Lesser Leopard and the Fire. And I think that's where the, a lot of the streaks are coming from. I've actually seen a lot of Leopard Fire combos with the streaks that uh, that's pretty typical of the Leopard Fire. You add Lesser on top of it and it really brings out. This one actually looks like it has a little, little uh, ringer on the tail. Sometimes that's actually a head pied indication that you actually have a little ringer. Sometimes it's just kind of an anomaly on the snake. Here's another one. This is the Lesser Leopard Pastel Clown. So this is actually the clown, which is recessive, the pastel, and then we're putting on the Lesser Leopard on top of that. Really awesome combo. And I actually went one step further on this. I actually added one more layer of a pastel to make the super pastel Lesser Leopard Clown. <laughs> you can kind of see, you know, you work on one combo and you, you like the Lesser Leopard and you start adding on all this different stuff and it just really makes for some mind-blowing combination if you have the right base. Here's another one I thought was completely different than a lot of the other ones. This is actually the Leopard Lesser, Yellow Belly, and Spider. It's almost hard to see the spider in there. It makes for a really crazy combination. I can't say I've ever seen a ball python that looks anything quite like this snake. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Uber Adventures asks, how can I tell the difference between a pastel and a normal ball python? And that is a very good question. I would say in most cases, the pastel will have more yellow color compared to a normal ball python. And in some cases, it'll actually have a reduced pattern, kind of broken up a little bit. But in some cases, with certain lines of pastel, it's almost impossible to tell the difference, especially because as adults, they really tend to brown out just the base pastel. And the, pretty much the telltale sign that you have a pastel you can really easily tell the difference is pastels have green eyes and normals will not have green eyes. And I'd say just on the base pastel, it's pretty easy to tell just from the eyes. But if you start mixing in other genes on top of the pastel, sometimes it's not always true that they have green eyes. As a matter of fact, I've produced some pastel bamboos and put them side by side with my non-pastel, my regular bamboo hatchlings. And I was even shining the light in the eyes and everything. I could not see the green color in the eyes of my pastel bamboos and really to tell the difference between the the pastel bamboos and the regular bamboos the pastels have a little bit lighter of a head on top of the head but other than that you really can't tell until they start aging a little bit and it seems like the pastel bamboos really start yellowing you know getting a little bit more of a yellow color after they're about yearlings or maybe a year and a half or two years of age they really start bringing out the yellow color which is kind of the opposite of a regular pastel so I'd say pretty much what you need to do is you need to look at the eyes and if they have green eyes I can almost guarantee there is pastel in the mix 
So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.